this is a crap circuit. Why have they done that? But <laughs> it's only when you start to get into the details of how a circuit design evolves, do you understand things a bit more. And yeah, okay, right. listen, sometimes designs are just crap. It's been, it's been good fun. We have a nice little um, group where we play on a, you know, we, we have a boys night in once a week. And, uh, you know, nice. we don't we don't stream it or put it on online or anything anyway. It's just it's just friends having fun, um, you know, lots of banter and abuse. And we just <laughs> make up the rules, you know, halfway through. If we feel the race is getting a bit dull, we'll throw a fake safety car and we do all that sort of stuff. And um, it's just fun because, it's, you know, it's, it's low pressure. And as I say, you're just racing with your mates. Um, so we've got a good little gang of us friends, um, people like... You know, Jason Plato, Darren Turner, um, you know, uh, Anthony Davidson's in there, Steve Soper's in there. So there's, there's a bunch of us in yeah. there anyway. So it's, it's actually quite good. There's about 15 of us now. So it's quite a good group. That's fantastic. It's a good way to, um, you know, if you're on Discord or one of those yeah. servers where you can talk to each other, it's a great way to just kind of catch up with the with the guys yeah, yeah, and girls and, I mean. and do a bit of driving at the same time. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, um, and, and also, you know, for me... I've actually found it a nice way to experience tracks that I, I never got to race. You know, I, I, I regret that the that I haven't had the chance to do more in, in North America because I think they have the best circuits, frankly. Yeah, you know, they've got I some agree. amazing circuits out Proper there. Proper tracks. Um, and, you know, Dario Franchita is a good friend of mine. And so he's he's part of our little sim group. And we often, you know, he'll, he'll as we're driving around, I don't know, whatever, mid-Ohio or one of these circuits, he'll start, you know, telling us the stories of all the barriers he's hit along the way and, and stuff. <laughs> it's quite good fun. <laughs> um, but, you know, also it, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's cool because you, you suddenly get to do this whole mix of things. But uh, for me, it, it actually turned into a working tool, to be honest, because one of the things I do is I, I now work with a company in the UK designing racetracks, um, a company called Driven International based um, down in Surrey. And what what happened was, you know, I used to go to their sim to drive the tracks and, you know, create the data that we needed to supply to the FIA for homologation stuff. And obviously, as things started to lock down, that became impossible. So then once I got my sim up and running, we set up this remote method of working, which has been great now because, you know, for example, tomorrow we got a workshop. Uh, we're doing this track in, in Canada. You know the 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 track promoter is going to be joining us on Zoom along with his investors, some media people from there, and we're going to get a chance to show all of these people the track that we've created, not just in a two D drawing on a PDF document or a CAD drawing, but actually they're going to be able to watch cars going around this track, and um, so it's been great. You know we've been able to model. You know we we've got a, a young lad uh, in there who does a great job of making the tracks um, for us. So. You know, we we've been able to. I think we've done five five different projects th last year. Um, wow! I was going to ask you about that. Actually, it was on my uh, my my little list of questions because I saw it on your your Instagram. Mm. Uh, I saw there's one in Hawaii and yeah. and all different places. Yeah. Um, what does what does the process of of designing a track involve? And you know, where do you start? Do, you, do they start? literally drawing it out looking at the area that they've got to work with and then into the sim or you know what does that look like so it, it, it's a funny one because people often sit there and go and i was the same you know i would often be critical of track design saying well uh, this is a crap circuit why have they done that but <laughs> it's only when you start to get into the details of how a circuit design evolves do you understand things a bit more and yeah okay, right. listen sometimes designs are just crap but, um, <laughs> you know the thing is you say so you start with basically the land you know the, somebody would come to us with a project and say we've got this piece of land and in general you know if you want to make a a grade three circuit so club racing up to let's say national f3 you need about a 90 to 100 acres. Uh, if you want a grade two circuit, right. you need about 140, 150 acres, ideally. Um, and if you want to do a grade one circuit, you, you need about 220 odd acres. So this, that's a rough guide in terms of the brackets. And do you need more space because of the length of the track or, or because of the, the length, runoff? The I width, suppose both, actually. Yeah, the length, the track width, and the runoff areas, obviously all, all three. So, okay. um, you know, you have to take 
multiple boxes. So, you know, you, you, once you get the piece of land, then you got to work out, you know, sometimes we'll get these, these circuits, which are a really long piece of land, but they're quite narrow. So there's yeah. very little then you can do with it really in terms, you know, you have to try and come up with, with creative ideas for the layout. So yeah, the, you know, you start really honestly with, with just a piece of paper and, and some pens and just, you look at the lay of the land and you try sketching out some ideas. So normally we try and filter down to about six ideas, just as rough sketches. And once we get to that half dozen or so, we'll pick and choose the best bits from the from those six um, and then make one, which we think at that time is what we call version one as a working model. Um, once we get to that version one, we do it in CAD, create the CAD drawings start putting in things like elevation and camber and, and elements of that. And, and also then at that stage, we start factoring in the FIA safety standards and stuff. So, mm. you know, are we able to create the runoff areas? Are we able to place the barriers to avoid a T-bone, for example, and things like that in, in certain places? So you go through all of that. And once we've got to a place where we're pretty happy with all of that, and this will take, you know, a few weeks, uh, then we build the SIM model. And we, what we found particularly in 2020, since we've started this sort of remote working method is more, more often than not, when we put the track from CAD onto the SIM, I've driven it and thought, mm, don't, not quite sure about this, you know, and, and we've, it's been, it's actually surprised us how often we've changed things uh, after driving it on the SIM. You also have to factor in the what the track's going to be used for right you know if the yeah. track is going to be used for racing then you have to think of overtaking and things like that if it's a you know like a private members club or a private resort or something like that then it's actually about track days so you, you put more mm. emphasis on having a nice flow to it having it you know geared towards being a little bit easier towards amateur drivers who've never driven on a track before um and then you've got the whole complexity of, is the track going to be used for bikes as well as cars? Uh, and that li throws a whole other layer of, of issues on top, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's been really interesting because I've been able, you know, I've been lucky to drive at nearly a hundred tracks around the world um, and also visit several others. I think my last count was 89 circuits that I've driven at. Um, wow. so I'm able to sort of go into my memory bank and say, you know what, you know, turn 10 at the Nürburgring has this inside curb and this sort of camber. And I think that would work well here. Or, you know, let's take the shell hairpin at Alton park and we can try and do that. And you just try and pick and mix ingredients of different tracks, um, and, and incorporate it. 